Hello friends, come on in and pull up a chair. There's room for everyone at Grandma Camp. I'm so glad you came to Grandma Camp with me today. Let's have some fun. Have you ever seen a shower cap? Shower caps are made out of plastic and they're made so that people who get in a shower or in the bath don't get their hair wet. Why do you think somebody would want to keep their hair dry when they're in the bath or the shower? Well, maybe they want to put some curls in their hair and it won't curl if it's wet. Or maybe they already did their hair and they don't want it to get messed up. When are some special times that people might use a shower cap to keep their hair dry? Maybe it's because they're going to a special place. Maybe they're going to church or to a party or to a wedding and they just want to protect their hair. Isn't it fun to dress up sometimes to go to special places? We do our hair so beautiful. Maybe you do your nails. Definitely brush our teeth so that we're nice and clean and we put on our nicest clothes and maybe some good shoes so that we can go someplace special. I think it's so fun to dress up sometimes. When we dress up into all of our nice things, it helps us to remember that we are special and important because we've taken extra good care of ourselves for whatever we're going to be doing. Everybody is special and important. But what if you're stinky and sweaty and maybe you've been playing and you're all dirty? Does that mean you're not special and important anymore? Of course not. You're special and important just because you're you. And because you're special and important, that makes it so you can treat other people like the special and important people that they are. I think you're wonderful, no matter what you look like, even if you're in a silly hat. But I hope that you'll remember that because you're special and important, you can take care of yourself. You can put your clothes in the wash so they get clean. You can do your hair. You can brush your teeth. You can keep your body so healthy. Remember that I think you're great, but don't forget to brush your teeth. The Rainbow Fish by Marcus Pfister. Translated by J. Allison James. A long way out in the deep blue sea, there lived a fish. Not just an ordinary fish, but the most beautiful fish in the entire ocean. His scales were every shade of blue and green and purple, with sparkling silver scales among them. The other fish were amazed at his beauty. They called him Rainbow Fish. Come on, Rainbow Fish, they would call. Come and play with us. But the Rainbow Fish would just glide past, proud and silent, letting his scales shimmer. One day, a little blue fish followed after him. Rainbow Fish, he called. Wait for me. Please give me one of your shiny scales. They are so wonderful, and you have so many. You want me to give you one of my special scales? Who do you think you are? cried the rainbow fish. Get away from me! Shocked, the little blue fish swam away. He was so upset, he told all his friends what had happened. From then on, no one would have anything to do with the rainbow fish. They turned away when he swam by. What good were the dazzling, shimmering scales with no one to admire them? Now he was the loneliest fish in the entire ocean. One day he poured out his troubles to the starfish. 
I really am beautiful. Why doesn't anybody like me? I can't answer that for you, said the starfish. But if you go beyond the coral reef to a deep cave, you will find the wise octopus. Maybe she can help you. The rainbow fish found the cave. It was very dark inside, and he couldn't see anything. Then suddenly two eyes caught him in their glare, and the octopus emerged from the darkness. I have been waiting for you, said the octopus with a deep voice. The waves have told me your story. This is my advice. Give a glittering scale to each of the other fish. You will no longer be the most beautiful fish in the sea, but you will discover how to be happy. I can't, the rainbow fish started to say, but the octopus had already disappeared into a dark cloud of ink. Give away my scales, my beautiful shining scales? Never! How could I ever be happy without them? Suddenly, he felt the light touch of a fin. The little blue fish was back. Rainbow fish, please don't be angry. I just want one little scale. The rainbow fish wavered. Only one very small shimmery scale, he thought. Well, maybe I wouldn't miss just one. Carefully, the rainbow fish pulled out the smallest scale and gave it to the little fish. Thank you, thank you very much! The little blue fish bubbled playfully as he tucked the shiny scale in among his blue ones. A rather peculiar feeling came over the rainbow fish. For a long time, he watched the little blue fish swim back and forth with his new scale glittering in the water. The little blue fish whizzed through the ocean with his scale flashing, so it didn't take long before the rainbow fish was surrounded by the other fish. Everyone wanted a glittering scale. The rainbow fish shared his scales left and right, and the more he gave away, the more delighted he became. When the water around him filled with glimmering scales, he at last felt at home among the other fish. Finally, the rainbow fish had only one shining scale left. His most prized possessions had been given away, yet he was very happy. Come on, rainbow fish, they called. Come and play with us. Here I come, said the rainbow fish, and happy as a splash, he swam off to join his friends. Today we're going to do an easy craft that's going to help us learn and remember our right hand and our left hand. If you're looking at me, I held up my right hand, but if you mirror me, remember when we did mirror, mirror, that's your left hand. If we're looking in different directions, then my right would be on this side, but I would need to cross my hand to shake your right hand on that side. If we're facing the same direction, right is always to the right and left is always to the left. It can be confusing and that's why we're doing this project. You can print off this paper that says left and right. Or if you want, you can just have somebody who already knows how to write, write left on the left side of the paper and right on the right side of the paper. For this project, I'm using finger paints and I'm choosing red because red starts with r, r, r. Just like the word right, r, r, right. So I'm going to use red on my right hand and I chose blue for my left hand. I also brought a paintbrush and you'll want two wet wipes. Keep the wet wipes 
on your left hand and on your right hand so that you can use them immediately after you've painted. I'm going to start with the red for my right hand and I'm going to use a paintbrush this time to paint my finger paint all over my right hand. Some people love the feeling of paint on their hands and some people really don't and that's okay. The good news is it's only going to be here for a minute. Did you notice that I'm in my apron? Make sure that you're not getting your finger paint all over your clothes by wearing an apron or a paint shirt. Okay, now that I have my paint all over my hand, I want to keep my fingers open, not closed. Open those fingers, and I'm going to set my hand straight down. Don't wiggle my fingers, and then straight up, and then onto the wet wipe. Okay, so straight down, don't wiggle my fingers. Press your hand down to get all that paint on the paper. Now straight up and onto the wet wipe. Parents, when I did this in preschool, all I did was set the wet wipe on their hand, have them close their hands like this, and go straight to the sink to wash it off. You'll probably want to wipe off your paintbrush too or rinse it off. And now I'm going to do my left hand and I chose blue. So same thing, cover that all over your hand. It wasn't on our hand for very long though, was it? Cover it on there. Remember how we did this? Straight down. Don't wiggle your fingers. Keep them open. Straight down. Press it. Straight up and onto the wet wipe. Just like straight down. Press your fingers onto the paper. And straight up and straight to the wet wipe. Go wash off that hand. And now we have a picture that shows our handprint in red for our right hand and in blue for our left hand. And you can hang this on your door or your mirror so you can hold up your hands and remember, is it my left hand or my right hand? You know that we have five senses. Our sense of sight, our sense of hearing, our sense of smell, our sense of taste, and our sense of touch. We use all of our senses to discover things in our world. I brought my guessing box. Let's see if we can use our senses to guess what's in this box. Inside this box, there is something that looks like a container. It's kind of rectangular. And inside the container, what is in it is white. What's in this box doesn't really sound like anything. What's in this box smells like a school or an office. It has kind of a chemical smell. What's in this box is not something you should taste. I can't tell you what it tastes like because it is not something we eat. 
what's in this box. In the container, it feels hard and kind of soft and squishy. But if you take it out of the container, it feels sticky and smooth. Can you guess what's in the box? Let's open it and see if you guess right. Did you guess glue? You guessed right. You're so smart. Thank you for coming to Grandma Camp with me today. I had so much fun with you. I want you to know that I love you and I think you're wonderful just as you are. Come again soon.